I'm the founder of Choreography for Business, which is a presence and body language firm. And as many would expect, I definitely started, and this, this was back in 2017, so this firm started very much as in-person communication, elevating our presence so that we're really able to connect with audiences, drive impact through our presentations and our communication. Uh, and the way I got into this was through my career as a performing artist. So I used to dance professionally with the Boston Ballet. I danced with them for 10 years and retired about four years ago. So back in 2016. It was definitely a little bit of a rough transition, I will admit, uh, leaving the stage and the, what I'd really fought for for a really long time. Um, but what happened was interesting. I, I actually started working at Harvard in their fundraising department, and I noticed pretty quickly that there was a lot of potential that I felt that was being left on the table in terms of the way people were connecting to themselves and then connecting with others. So I started choreography for business, started coaching people in the hospitality scene. So people uh, front of house roles with restaurants and then gradually moved into other roles with consultants and finance, um, higher ed, and basically anyone who was going to be in a client facing relationship. Um, and then COVID happened. And the fascinating thing was that we all moved online, right? And communication and the need to connect became even more urgent. Uh, and so I started developing programming around developing a virtual presence, right? So in the next few minutes, it's, it's going to be a, a pretty experiential um, shared time together. And um, I'm gonna bring in some of the work that I do with clients and a lot of that work, which is not, um, I don't think that it'll be a surprise to many people, but a lot of it is rooted in the idea of physicality, right? And, and coming to the table with a solid mind-body connection so that you can connect, number one, with your intention and the reason why you're speaking or the reason why you are presenting or calling the meeting, um, and then also, you know, your goals for impact, right? So... I'd love to actually start with this concept that I call physical anchoring, right? And so this is interesting because it's a concept that I've actually brought with me from my time performing professionally with the Boston Ballet. So many dancers, athletes, performers have to be able to gather themselves, right? In the moments before they go on stage, they have to be able to really center themselves again around that intention so that they're able to really walk out on stage and have that first moment, that first impression, be one of authenticity, authority, expertise, and confidence, right? When we feel those things, we are able to project them outwards with much more effectiveness, right? If we kind of bust on stage and we haven't taken the moment to really prepare, then it can be a little bit tricky to it just becomes a lot harder to then take those next steps to connect with your audience, right? Um, so that being said, it's something that I practiced as a dancer. It's something that I coach people when I'm working with them in person. And now that we're in this virtual world, it's a concept that I coach people so that they can feel connected to themselves. Um, one of the things that's really fascinating about these virtual connections and these virtual channels that we're connecting over is that it's very easy to become disconnected from yourself, right? And when we look at presence classically, right, as it has been defined by Amy Cuddy and all the other experts out there, um, myself included, there's very much a self, a, an awareness of the self, and then an awareness of the audience. And so if you're not first connected to yourself, your intention, your why, then it's impossible really to connect with others in that in a way that's authentic and impactful. Um, and so what happens in the virtual world is many of us go from virtual meeting to virtual meeting to virtual meeting to virtual meeting all day long. We don't really leave or, or move around even within our own apartment, right? Normally when we're in person, we move from one office to the next, or we go and meet someone for coffee and 
with that change of scenery, we're almost able to get ourselves in the mindset of, okay, this next meeting means X. When we're in the virtual world, it's very easy to just be joining and joining and joining and not, um, not really taking the time to pause, gather, and then present yourself. So all that to say, that is what has kind of really brought me to reconfigure this physical anchoring exercise to suit the virtual environments that we are in day in, day out. Um, and I'd love to take you through that exercise. The exercise itself is short. It's about you know three to four minutes. Um, it's a combination of mindfulness, a little bit of very gentle breath work, and some light stretches. It is designed to be conducted while seated. You can also do it while standing, but in no way is this a complicated yoga exercise. So don't worry about that. Um, and right before we dive in, I would love to ask this question of you all. So just take a moment. And if I were to ask you, on a scale of one to 10, how present do you feel right now? Right, so one would be not very present. I actually didn't hear the question. And 10 would be here with you, mind, body, and soul. So just take a moment and pick your number. And then just go ahead and put that number to side. Ooh, actually, what would be more fun would be type your number into the chat. Just so we can get an idea of like where, where everyone's at. And with those numbers, right, so whatever number it is, put it aside. I'm going to now invite you to close your eyes. And I want you to actually forget that there's a screen in front of you. I want you to just ignore this portal that is connecting so many of us in this one unique moment. Okay, and all I want you to focus on is your body and the sound of my voice. So the very first thing we're going to do, again, eyes closed, is bring our, aware, our awareness into how our feet are touching the floor. So if your legs are crossed or tucked, go ahead and uncross them, untuck them, and plant them firmly into the ground. And now, instead of having your feet just passively resting on top of the ground, I want you to actually channel energy into the ground, actively pushing the ground away. And you might actually notice that your body almost reorients itself as a result of that energetic push, right? Maybe you've gained an extra inch and a half or inch or half an inch of height, right? Your feet are gonna be at hip width, okay? And your feet are pointing forward. So they're in two parallel lines and they're pressing energy into the ground in a way that's like energizing, right? And I want you to feel the energy pulsing through your body, right? All the way through your legs, to your pelvis, up through your upper body, and then out through the top of your head, right? Because that energy needs some place to go. Great. So our knees are over our toes, right? We wanna make sure that our circulation is free to move. And then when we get to the pelvis, I want you to imagine that your pelvis is like a bowl full of water, right? I and mean, you don't want the contents of that pelvis that bowl full of water to spill at the front, which happens when we arch our back. And you don't want that bowl full of water to spill at the back, which happens when we tuck our pelvis down and you see it, you immediately will have a lower posture as a result, right? So that bowl of water is steady, which means that our posture can be open and upright. So we have our feet pressing into the ground, our knees in line with our toes, our bowl of water still and calm. We've created a foundation for ourselves. Okay, and now when we get to the upper body, I want you to actually reach up to the ceiling. Can you touch the ceiling, wiggle your fingers? Maybe this is as much space as you've taken up all day. Open up your arms wide to the sides, expand, feel that expanse as a human, it's amazing. And then bring your arms back down by your sides. Let's do that one more time, reaching up to the sky, opening up all the way down to the sides. Great. Bringing your hands to rest on your thighs. And now let's do two really exaggerated shoulder rolls. So shoulders come forwards, up to the ears, 
and out and back, right? So really intentionally giving your shoulders a big circle, almost like an active massage, getting any of those cobwebs out, bringing them to rest in a neutral open position. Now we're gonna tuck our chin to our chest and let the weight of the head produce the stretch in the back, right? So we spend a lot of time in front of screens, that goes without saying, and we build tension in our necks, right? So bringing the head over to one side, just feeling the stretch, maybe even taking that opposite hand and giving yourself a little massage, feeling the guitar strings or the knots, and then back down through the center, over to the other side, right? Noticing any differences, not trying to change anything here, just giving yourself that light stretch. Back down through the center, all the way up, bringing your head to a neutral, your shoulders are neutral, keeping those eyes closed again for one more moment. Let's take two deep collective breaths in, right? This first one's just for yourself. So breathe deeply in through the nose. Hold it at the top and release it at the mouth. And now this one collectively thinking of every other person who is on this, in this conference, a speaker, a guest, a participant, deep breath in through the nose together. Hold it at the top and then everyone let anything you do not need out through the mouth. Great. Now when you're ready, you can flutter your eyes open. After this exercise, right? And again, this exercise was like two, two or three minutes. Right? I wanna know how more, how much more present do you feel? How, how did that exercise influence the way that you're settled in your body, right? Grounded in the present moment. And I'd love to ask this question again. Um, in the chat, right? So if you're able to, yeah, thank you. Awesome. Beautiful guys, I love that, right? So this, this whole idea, it is not revolutionary, I will admit, but it's the simplicity that we really need right now, right? Because we have so much coming at us in terms of distractions, we have so many pulls to our attention, right? Like how many screens do we have around us right now? How many tabs might some of us have open? Devices, right? But, but as human beings, we are really built to be able to connect authentically with one other person or one other event, one other channel to focus our energy. We, we are not designed to multitask as much as many of us would love to think that we can, right? And so taking this moment to really slow down our, our breath, to connect with the breath, right? To almost feel like the, the breath in is paired with the heartbeat and the breath out is paired with the heartbeat, right? These are all things that can help us move into a parasympathetic nervous system space, right? Which helps us actually um, really tap into where we want to be, right? We want to tap into that intention. We want to feel ourselves connected with our intention so that then when we do click join, when we do walk on stage, right, for when we get back to that beautiful moment where we're going to be walking on stages and having a live audience in person again, we're not battling nerves. We're not battling a sense of feeling rushed. We're not battling a, an out-of-body experience, right, because we've taken that two, three minutes to center ourselves and remember why we're here, 